Welcome to Euro PCR 2025. I'm Nicola Ryan from the University of Aberdeen and it's my great pleasure to be here today with Flavio Ribicchini from the University of Verona. Welcome Flavio. Thank you Nicola. Um, it's great to be here with you today and I think today we're going to discuss um, left main stem and in particular calcified left main stem. Can you maybe give us some insights as to what the complexity are in this situation? Well, if there is a setting that needs to be simplified, it's exactly what we are talking about. Left main is the most important prognostic intervention in coronaries. And if you add the calcification of the left main, it becomes the most demanding under a technical point of view and the most important under a prognostic point of view. So whatever we do in a left main, in a calcified lesion must be perfectly planned and there are many considerations that I'd love to discuss with you today. Great, um, so shall we start off um, discussing a little bit about uh, mechanical circulatory support? Um, is it something you use commonly in your practice? Is it something that you stop to consider? How do you use it in everyday life? Well, it, it's good that we start from here because you know the, the complications of the left main could be very severe and one of the worst settings is the impaired left ventricular function. So we know that mechanical circulatory support can save lives but on the other hand we know that it adds complexity and risk of complications. So it's very important that we learn when and how to use different devices and in my personal experience I'd say that it's very clear that if you're doing an elective procedure or an emergent procedure with a patient with very low very low blood pressure, below 90, 95, or if you are treating a patient with a very impaired LV function, below 20, 25, with additional risk factors like important mitral regurgitation, you would rather put this in your list before touching the lesion. Then, in some cases, you can, intermediate cases, 38% uh, ejection fraction, 120 millimeters of mercury, you can put a balloon pump but always having on the shelf the opportunity to upgrade in case of need. This is very important because, as I said, using where it's not necessary will provide no benefit and may create problems. But not having that, doing an elective procedure in these situations, low blood pressure, bad ejection fraction, adds risk to the patient. Great. Um, so you've talked about uh, complexity and you've talked about the importance of uh, ensuring that we're doing the best treatment. Do you think that intercoronary imaging is something that we must do for every case? Is it something we should do for selective cases? How do you see the role of intercoronary imaging? Well, I, I can tell you my, my opinion is that you must do it. But I'd like to know also your opinion because to simplify complexity and calcified left main is a perfect example. I want to know what you think about using imaging in this setting. So I agree with you on this one. I think intercoronary imaging is a must in left main stem. We know, as you said, that a calcified left main stem is a really prognostically important vessel. It's a complex procedure and we want to take it step by step. We want to simplify the procedure. Okay, there may be some cases where we're not able to image up front because we can't pass an imaging catheter. But as soon as we can, I like to image, I like to understand my plaque morphology, I like to understand how I'm going to modify my plaque. Once I've modified my plaque, then my key is, have I modified it adequately? If I look at my imaging, I see, okay, I've cracked my calcium. Now I'm in a good position to stent. Or actually, no, I looked like on angio, I had an excellent result, balloon was expanding, everything looked good, but I still have a lot of calcium, so I need to do something more. So for me, imaging is absolutely a must. We're looking to reach the equivalence of limas in young patients, in older patients. These are fragile patients, fragile vessels. We want to ensure that before we put a stent in, we've adequately prepared everything. Is that something similar to your approach? Well, I am really happy to hear, I mean, you are much younger than I am. I come from a generation where angiography was guiding everything. Then physiology came in. The role of physiology in left main is another issue, but now we know that imaging for the treatment of left main is essential. It is changing prognosis. It has been changing guidelines. We are waiting for some results of randomized trials early next year. And I think that for what you said, our aim to reach the quality of a surgical mammary implant 
in the in the in the LED, we have to do our best. And imaging is adding safety and good term results. So yes, I absolutely agree with what you said. I am happy to see the new generations are getting this in their mind when they afford this kind of procedures. But let me ask you another thing. If we talk about complexity and we're talking about left main and we're talking about generations, mm -hmm. uh, there was a time where more stents was better and putting stents everywhere and doing complex procedure was the, the, the way to do. Which is your opinion on treating patients with two or one stents? That could make a difference. I think that's a really key point. So we know more stents, more metal increases the risk of complications. In the longer term, our patients are more likely to run into problems if we have more stents in. So certainly, I'm not dogmatic about it. I approach each case on a case by case basis. But my general approach is that I start off with a, a layered provisional. So assess, implant my first stent, if typically in a left main, left main to LAD, because typically it's the most important vessel, then reassess my side branch. Do I have an adequate result? Do I need to kiss? If I'm kissing, a really interesting point is um, if we're going to do kissing, should we treat the side branch with a drug-coated balloon? Should we treat it with simply non-compliant balloons? I think, okay, our DCB BIF trial tells us drug-coated balloons gives us better outcomes. So certainly it's something that I'm adapting more and more into my practice. I'm not adverse to implanting a second stent, but certainly if you take a layered provisional approach, you don't, you're not mandated to implant the second stent. Perhaps, you know, in the past we said left main, we're putting in two stents. Step by step, we decide, do we need two stents? Um, would you like to maybe expand a little bit? Are there particular situations that you think two stents are mandatory or do you take a similar approach doing a stepwise uh, provisional? Well, th this is a perfect uh, topic to discuss. I'd say not the difference, but the synergy between experience and evidence. You see, we have built evidence on the base of experience and we move from two stents, complex procedures to the simplified version of uh, provisional. All what can be done provisional is my preferred. So it could be a T, uh, a tap, or a culotte. When you start with two stents and you start crushing stuff in the left main, you cannot come back. So I would definitely uh, say that I do prefer to start with a strategy which is provisional and eventually, in a minority of cases, putting a second stent with T, tap, or culotte. Perfect. So as always, it was wonderful chatting to you today. I think we've learned a lot from our discussion and three key messages that I'm taking home from this is that left main stem and in particular left main stem with calcification is a complex procedure. We want to uh, simplify the complexity. So in order to do that, we need to assess things well with in intravascular imaging. We need to consider when mechanical circulatory support is necessary and when actually it's simply adding complexity that we don't need to the procedure. And finally, when we choose our stenting approach, we take things on a step-by-step -step basis, assessing at each step and coming to our final conclusion. And at the end of the day, we're looking to produce excellent angiographic results and we're always striving to meet the um, surgical outcome with a Lima. Great. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you.